to get involved in biblical research, you must be as willing and prepared to unlearn as to learn. You do not begin to endeavor to learn something in addition to what you know and believe, but many times you have to change and substitute what you previously thought or knew or believed. All that is believed and thought to be known must be tested and proved by the Word of God. Where what we thought we knew and believed does not stand the test of the accuracy and integrity of God's Word, we must be willing to give it up in place of imagination, tradition, theology, denominationalism, philosophy, or anything else. Today there are so many would-be, quote, doctors, end of quote, with this idea and that concept, who are doing nothing more than causing people to ditch the way, for they are the blind leaders of the blind, and publishing so many, quote, good, end of quote, works that lead us astray. To have a revelation from God in written form, it of necessity must be in words. Each word, then, must logically have the same validity, authority, and importance as the revelation in total. It is words that make up the Word. The Bible does not contain the Word of God, but it is the Word of God. For anyone to believe that the Bible simply contains the Word of God and is filled with interpolation, myths, and deliberate forgery, yet continue to preach, lecture, teach, and even write commentaries, is both unreasonable and illogical. If such an one discontinued taking any further interest in the Bible, his action would at least be logical and consistent with his belief. The Bible in the way ministry is our sole and primary source for reference regarding any subject of which it speaks. If the subject dealt with is not what the Bible itself claims it to be, then we have no true or accurate revelation in words, and thus no true God, and the book is unworthy of any further attention regarding revelation. The Bible states that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God, Theopanustos, God breathed, 2 Timothy 3.16, and that holy men of God spake by revelation as they were moved by the Holy Ghost, God, 2 Peter 1.21. This is the biblical claim to being the Word of God. It is the primary testimony, witness. It is only for us to endeavor to believe and understand it or leave it. The revelation of God in the Bible, the Scriptures was written as the textbook, the rules of God's ball game for believers who desire to play in His league. The Bible was never written or intended for the unbelievers or God rejectors. It was written for those who truly desire to know Him and the power of His resurrection, Philippians 3.10, those desiring to have the more abundant life, John 10.10, 10, and to be more than conquerors, Romans 8.37, and that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through His name, John 20.31. It is not for us to explain the Word's explanation. It is up to us to believe and receive it and endeavor to understand it or leave it. We do not question its validity any more than players question the established basic rules of any athletic rule book. The written revelation is for those who desire and will to know. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men but as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. 1 Thessalonians 2.13 In Jeremiah 15.16, we have a revealing truth relating to an historical fact of the rediscovery and finding of the book of, law, of, the, book of the law by Hilkiah in the reign of Josiah. It's recorded in 2 Kings 22.8 and in 2 Chronicles 34.8. 14 and 15. But Jeremiah states, quote, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. Notice the word words, it is plural. To eat them is a figure of speech. And I forgot to put the figure in. I have to figure that out, I guess. 
meaning. He chewed, digested, and assimilated the words. He read, he studied, believed, he understood the words, put them into his mind. Then the next phrase states, And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Notice the word word is singular. The word is made up of words. As your word regarding anything is composed of words. The word was the joy and rejoicing of his heart. It was a difficult time for the prophet, for he was reproached and hated. Yet when the word was discovered, he fed upon it and had the joy and rejoicing of his heart. Joy is a heart condition. Happiness is a circumstance condition. In John 17, 8, it is declared that Jesus Christ said, I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. Notice the word words is plural. To have a revelation, it must be in words. And to have it in writing, it must be in words. Jesus Christ gave the words God gave to him by revelation. Another proof that Jesus Christ is not God. Jesus Christ received, believed, and understood God's word. He didn't explain it, but simply declared it as an ambassador or a doulos would. Furthermore, in John 17, 14, the word states, <coughs> I have given them thy word. The word word here is singular. Jesus Christ knew that the revelation of the words of God make up the word of God. For if there is a revelation from God in writing, it must be in words. The written word of God has been grossly neglected for ages and for the most part been replaced by opinions, traditions, and religion, causing us to live in a dark night of the soul. And in the desert of despair, in fear, worry, anxiety, frustration, and in spiritual defeat. It was such a dark night in the days of Ezra, but one morning Ezra opened the book, the scroll, and the believers heard again that the joy of the Lord was their strength. Nehemiah 8. So they read in the book in the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, and he was above all the people, and when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And all the people went their way to eat and to drink and to send portions and to make great mirth because they had understood the words that were declared unto them. And all the congregation of them that were come again out of the captivity made booths and sat under the booths. For since the days of Joshua the son of Nun, unto that day had not the children of Israel done so. And there was very great gladness. If the words of which the word is composed is to be the joy and rejoicing of our hearts, someone must open the book again and make it possible for us to have a clear knowledge and understanding of the words and the word. We must again truly search the scriptures, John 5, 39. And doing so will give us the distinction of the Bereans who were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. Acts 17, 11. On one occasion, a highly respected and one in great authority in Ethiopia came to the great center of religion where he assumed truth to be but discovered to his chagrin that the truth regarding the Savior was not to be found there. For the one whom he came to seek was not there. He had been rejected, condemned, and crucified. And as he was returning toward Ethiopia from the great center of religion, he was still questing, and that from the primary source, the Scriptures. It was his only solace after being so disappointed and not finding someone to help him understand at the greatest center of religion in the world. The Ethiopian eunuch was reading from the scroll of Isaiah 53, 7 and 8, according to Acts chapter 8, 26 and following. 
when Philip interrupted him and asked, Understandest thou what thou readest? That is very important. Many have their understanding darkened, Ephesians 4.18, being alienated from the life of God because they're blind of their blindness of heart which keeps them ignorant. <coughs> but it is the will of God for those truly searching the Scriptures for truth, the declaration of Ephesians 1.18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know. And thus the Ethiopian eunuch replied to Philip's question regarding understanding, No, for how can I understand except someone should guide me, show me the way of understanding, give me an understanding of what I'm reading? How needful this hunger is today, and how needful for one who can rightly divide the word and show the hungry one the way of understanding. Isaiah 40:14 with all the riches of the full assurance of understanding of Colossians 2.2. 2. God sent one man, Philip, to just one hungry soul, the Ethiopian eunuch, who was truly searching the Scriptures, and Philip surely gave him by the tongue his words, words easy to be understood, 1 Corinthians 14.9. For they that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled, Matthew 5.6. Our resurrected Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in his appearance on the road to Emmaus on Easter Sunday, said to two hungry and searching souls who also had been at the great center of religion, trusting and believing that this Jesus of Nazareth should have redeemed Israel, but instead the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. And Jesus said, Oh, how foolish it is, and how slow of heart man is to believe all that the prophets have spoken. And beginning at Moses and going through all the prophets one by one, he explained, interpreted, gave them an understanding in all the scriptures of things concerning himself. Luke 24, 13 and following. Yes, one man. The resurrected Son of God took the time to teach just two, yes, two hungry souls who were searching the scriptures, believing them to be the words and Word of God, giving them an understanding so their soul's sincere desire might be met. The conclusion has not been written. <laughs>